Hello, CFA Nation. Gabe. Nick. Ooh. And we are here today to bring you guys another episode of Cricket Combos. Cricket Combos. Man, it seems like forever since we've been here. And obviously, with the end of the school year, it's been super busy for us both. But ah, so glad to get back to cricket and talk about one of the Sinister Six right now. A guy who, uh, bro, for life, okay? He don't get off there. He's like you, you know what I mean? He's not in he's not in Sophie Ecclestone uh, uh, territory where he could just you know come in and come out. You know this guy is, is if you're the president of Sinister Six, I would say he's probably the the secretary. You know who the vice president is. Oh, you know who the vice president is, <laughs> JC. <laughs> and I'm not talking That's about right. I'm not talking about who I consider to be the Messiah. The other JC. Listen. It has been too long since me and Gabe have been back recording. I posted a video on Cricket for Americans yesterday from the time we're recording this. And it had been a week since we posted a video. And that video I posted, we recorded like three weeks ago. So, I mean, it's been way too long. Thank you so much for uh, sticking around. We are so excited, like Gabe said, to get together and uh, and talk about this wonderful game that we love so much. Going back, take a trip from memory lane, okay? It was a Sunday. I remember it. Oh my! You know gosh. the weather here in Las Vegas was was okay, a little fair, but there was like something on the horizon. Oh We're watching God. this cricket match between West Indies and England, and West Indies they won the first match. They had the second match in hand. I mean, they were going to pull hand. off the impossible. The impossible has happened. They are about to pull off the impossible, and no joke. I'm sitting here watching, like, oh, I got to go to church. Thank goodness, I can't watch this, you know, debacle any longer. England's going to lose, and so I go to church. And I checked the score at the end of the first hour of church. And to my surprise, the West Indies have lost wickets. Like, you know, it was they are selling out. No, I want to lose my wicket. I want to give away my wicket. And who was the reason for that, Gabe? Who was the reason? Your boy, Sir Stuart Broad, okay? <laughs> Stuart the Broad. Nightmare Broad. Three <laughs> wickets in 14 balls. Three wickets in 14 balls. Dude, you you can't make it up. You can't make it up. That's where Campbell, you know, two guys joined the Sinister Six that day. All right? I'm <laughs> yes. sorry. That's Campbell true. joined the, the Sinister Six that day, and so did Stuart Broad. Campbell, for just giving away his wicket, here, sir, please take my wicket kindly, and then Can for have absolutely <laughs> having a monster drop right afterwards. Like, bro, you were just everything that's wrong with life right now. I was so angry. Don't get bro. going. Don't bro. get going. Bro, I was so angry. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, this is done, all right? You know what? All the West Indies has to do at this point is to go ahead. You know, it's it, – it's. Um, I, I want to say it was probably, bro, the, the 67th or something like that. It's it's close to the end, all right, dude? And we're like, bro, it's it's over. It's over. I'm shocked. People are telling me, man, Dundies. this is so huge. Not only is the West Indies going to win this first game – but this is going to be epic. Very At the minimum, they'll draw, but they should win this game. And then Stuart Broad just absolutely manhandles him. Bro, to be fair, some of those balls were ridiculous. The swing he got on balls oh, were unbelievable. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Stuart Broad uh, talks about his technique, technique, how he gets the ball to swing. Now, let's not gloss over it too much, okay? I know people have two big questions in their mind right now. You don't have to comment. You don't have to type that comment. I'm going to get you right now. I'll get to that question in a second. But first, this was so um, unbelievable because we weren't seeing it go this way that the audience of CFA, the early audience, were thinking that Gabe was a good luck charm. <laughs> I mean, that's how long ago it was. Oh, like, man. man. You watch this test series and they're going to win the first two matches, Gabe. You're gold. Gabe, you're at the antithesis of bad luck. Little do they know he's mush, and the mush came to stay. <laughs> but the main question people want to know, when did Nick get in the Sinister Six? When did that happen? Bro, you've been the, you, you were the president of the Sinister Six, bro. You, <laughs> okay. were the, you, you, you were the president of the Sinister Six before cricket, okay? Before, I would say back to our days, because for those of you that don't know, Nick is actually my mentor as an educator. And we would get into these heated debates about comic <laughs> books and movies or whatever. Was and it I a could, Jedi Sith? 
And I can get, get rarely win, rarely win, man. And I just anointed him, bro. I, I anointed him the, the the president of the Sinister Six, bro. At I that time, see, it was a club of one. <laughs> I can just see you like steaming and just upset about something. And you grab your work jacket or whatever, your coat jacket, and you walk with your head down to your car. And you're just like, that's it, Nick. I'm forming the Sinister Six, and you're going to stay there forever. <laughs> the president oh man but <laughs> honestly bro it's 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 i remember this because i'm thinking to myself like bro this is bro this is easy you know what i'm saying like i'm looking at the matchups and remember also i was it was fool's gold bro for a time there nick no joke i could have gone anywhere in the caribbean and i didn't have to pay for a room i didn't have to pay for a meal bro they were getting the place set up Bro, the CPL, daddy went undefeated. Undefeated. <laughs> All right. Yes, that's right. All right. The 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 Knight Riders, the, the Chimbago Knight Riders went undefeated. People are like, oh, Gabe, you know what I mean? Your good luck charm. You're so good at picking cricket. And then darkness came upon us. <laughs> and think- before the IPL got canceled, I think I was something like 19 of 22 picking a uh, 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 um um you know uh star players for the game or something like that i think i was something like i don't know 19 out of 21 picking matches it was absolutely insane bro i i think pilar had a quote a few days ago where he said i'm such a good captain of the cpl that even the mush does not affect me (laughs) (laughs) just kidding so we're gonna go ahead and check this out if you're new to the channel and you're like what are these guys talking about you know stick around the channel for a little while check out some videos we'll get an idea but don't forget also to like and subscribe if you are new. Like if you are not new, but you like the video. And let's go ahead and check out Stuart Broad, how he gives his fascinating display and explanation of his bowling techniques in three, two, one. Oh, I hate the headband. Oh, Daniel LaRusso. It's his length. Ooh, baseball glove. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Look how massive his hands are, bro. Right? That's super interesting. Like train tracks.
fastball changeup. Mm Absolutely. Wow, I think it'd be longer than that. So cool how they fly and they show the replay of that. Wow.
Yeah, so it's interesting. Look at the date. That was uh, the very, very beginning, at least, of COVID getting crazy around the world. So that's right. why he made that comment at the end. He knows no face mask, but they were doing the interviews. So maybe they didn't want to do that. But regardless of that, I uh, I, I got to admit, like, obviously, I know there's, there's a lot of gameplay. There's a lot of strategy. I know that bowlers don't just go out there and throw. I get that. But I never really thought about, um, you know, a pace bowler really worrying about so many different types of grips. You know, you think of spinners, they might have different groups for this or that to get the ball spinning, especially Rashid Khan. But I never thought someone like Stuart Broad, he mentioned himself, he doesn't really too much about swing too much. I didn't realize that he had cutters. He had all these different things that he was going at. Um, I thought he was more worried about the length and where he was placing that. So it was it was very interesting for me to, to listen to him and then I was blown away, and he said when he tries new things after about four or five net sessions, he's ready to try it out in a match. I would have thought, like, let me get into this for about three or four or five months before I'm ready to showcase it there. But I guess, you know, with test cricket, you got nothing but time, right? Nothing but balls. So you might as well have a few things in your toolbox. Those are some of the, the things that really, uh, really surprised me, and I, I was interested in learning. What about you? You know, for me, from the very beginning – I've always fell in love with bowling. I, I I said bowling is the closest thing to pitching in baseball. And as a catcher, as a father of a pitcher, I realize how how important and how much goes into it. And it's the same thing. You'll be you you you'll be you'll think about it this way. The so, for the most part on baseball teams, some of the most cerebral guys are your pitchers because you constantly have to be out there on the mound thinking and it's not just throwing. Yes. Do you got guys that just go out there and pump gas? Absolutely. Those are the guys that blow out their arms in three or four years and they're done. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you've got to be able to, it, it doesn't matter if you throw a hundred or 104 in baseball, I'm saying guys will catch up to that heat unless you're out thinking them and you're deceiving them. That's just the bottom line. Same thing in cricket, right? doesn't matter how hard you throw, but, or, or you bowl, I should say, guys will be able to pick up that pace unless you give them some variations. And what I found really interesting was when he was talking about how, you know, you're not going to be necessarily bowl at the stumps all the time, right? You're going to use your fielders to get those wickets, you know, a wicket's a wicket, you know what I mean? And it, it, it's about almost the sabermetrics he was talking about, how it makes no sense if I'm bowling color cutters to have, you know, three sips in a gully or two slips in a gully. You know what I mean? Because then I'm going to be getting hit over extra cover. So I want my defenders out there. And especially if I'm going to be bowling the slower bowl as well. So it really changes. And you see that all the time, how they'll change their fielding. That a lot is on the captain as well. That's why captain in cricket to me is one of the hardest positions. Absolutely. Um, I, I I just I was fascinated with one thing too. You've seen Trey. Trey is six two, six three. He's you know average size, a little bit a uh, uh, taller than average size. But the majority of pitchers are all six foot or above, and they have huge hands because the, the the bigger your hands, the more you can manipulate the ball. Where you you want to be able to literally get your the, your whole hand around that ball. And the deeper you hold it in, in baseball, same thing. It's a changeup. Where in here, they, you know, it's going to be a slower ball. Where if you hold it off your fingertips, you're going to be able to pull on those seams, and, and it's going to be a faster. Uh, um, it's going to be a fastball or a pace ball. Um, it's 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 inches, bro. It's inches. Honestly, the difference between a strike and a ball in baseball, it's releasing it here or releasing it here. Inches, Nick. You know what I mean? Same thing in, in cricket. Like he said, he's like, you know, the feel. He's like, just to where I release the ball and, and, and where it comes off my fingers after doing it time and time and time and time again. You know, uh, uh, you ever seen, and I'm sure you've seen this as a baseball player, you see, and oh, gosh, with Tatis, I'm sure you've seen this as a fan of Tatis, where a pitcher will throw a ball, and before the, the, the batter makes connection, you can already see the pitcher's face like, I messed up. They feel it, like, oh, that's a cookie down the middle. And guys like Tatis will unload on it. Like, you know it's gone before they hit it. You know what I mean? You ever seen that? Like, 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 like players will be like, watch that, pick, 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 pay close attention. A lot of times when uh, pitchers throw a ball and don't even turn around when it gets hit, they know, I messed up, I made a mistake. And that's because you know the feel, you know what I'm saying? Where you let go of that ball. And it's inches, bro. That's why everything from having a cold to, you know, having your arm sore to not getting enough sleep 
to whatever can affect your performance, man. And ah, oh, that was so cool. Um, you know, Stuart Broad, I joke around, Mick, when I say he's on the Sinister Six, he's on the Sinister Six, but I appreciate, you know, his 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 dedication to the craft and how good he is. Listen, you don't get 500 wickets in test cricket. Just because you show up, all right, cousin, that ain't gonna happen. You know what I mean? He he's got we we actually saw his five hundredth wicket. We saw Jimmy Anderson's six hundredth wicket, and you know those guys. You can tell they put a, 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 the time in. They work on their craft and they're masters of their craft. But how old is Stuart Broad now? He's in his thirties. Would you yeah, think that he's putting this kind of work in the nets, like you said? That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say this was a year ago when this video came out. So almost fourteen years on the national side in England. I'm not going to say that people get lazy. I'm not going to say that they don't care, but some people, you know, maybe not in cricket, but in, in the athletic world, they don't care. They've they've got their spot. They've got their place. They've got their money. And this guy's trying to, after 14 years on the national side, he's putting that ball down a little farther to where, I like how he called it, the turn of the fingers from where he is at the fingertips where he says he likes it. He's used to it that way. When he's in that, you know, the dog days of that middle, that test match in the 60th over, he's probably going to go to those fingertips but he's trying to work outside his comfort zone and see what can I get off the ball, make it a little slower, maybe even get a little more swing off of it if I bring it down a little bit so I can have that in my back pocket. And, and I think that's cool because if I was a pitcher, that's the way I would think strategically. When I'm sitting there playing PlayStation as a pitcher, I'm not just throwing a fastball down the middle or four sliders in a way over here. I'm mixing it up. I'm mixing, mixing up the eye level. I'm mixing up the sides of the plate different types of pitches. I'm trying to set up with a fastball and some off speed. You want to try to set up that hitter. And I like how he's thinking about that. I got my six balls, my over, you know, maybe I throw five just regular Stuart broad, um, fast balls, but maybe that third ball is going to be one a little lower here. And I'm going to see what kind of effect I get on that. And if, if I get a little Nick, if I get a little catch off that, or whatever, I'm going to be like, okay, that worked out pretty good. Let me see what I got next time. And I think that's really impressive. And I think that's what makes these guys different as opposed to someone that's been on the national side for 15 years, but it hasn't made the kind of stamp on history like a Stuart Broad with this 500 wicket. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, we could talk about this all day. The question is, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about this video? What do you think about the things Stuart Broad said? If there's any bowlers out there, let us know what your thoughts are. Did you learn something new from this video? But as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for checking us out. And until next time. That's six runs.